Hi, this is Paul from paulrobbie.com and this is a technical analysis tutorial on how I, I look at a stock really right from the beginning. Uh, MHK Industries, Mohawk Industries, uh, I'm looking at on the weekly time frame for a potential trade, but I'm also going to look at multiple time frames. So I'm just going to go through all the analysis that I do, framing the charts, uh, why I put support and resistance zones on, um, how I do it. Uh, looking for potential entries and things like that. So I've just uh, what I've done. I'm going to go through uh, Elliott Wave as well. All I've done at the moment is left the harmonic patterns on, and I've left. I've put on the um, support and resistance zones on the weekly, and I'm going to go through those now, and then we're going to start to build that picture to look at potential trades. So the first thing I want to do, really is I need to frame the chart. It's one of those things, I, I made loads of videos on this, and it's something you must do. You need to understand where the support and resistance zones are, where there's been reactions in the market in the past, there could be again. And it's not a line, it's a zone of price. And what we're looking for is to pick up highs and lows of certain pivots. So I can start on this, this low one here where the curse is. I'm going to use this arrow to point to things. So first of all, we see the top of this pivot point here where the arrow is, uh, and we, we pull back down. That's That depicts the top of this zone, but also the D pivot here on this back pattern that completed the automated completion zone and then the long trade was fantastic there. That was in 2016 we had uh, the, the automated harmonic pattern complete, complete in the completion zone and then we went from around $158 all the way up to the highs there so we know that's a great pivot point so that goes to the low but also we look here this high pivot here where the arrow is uh, that also forms that same high and then this recent crab pattern pivot, the start of this crab pattern uh, from 2019 was also in that zone. So this is a good support and resistance zone. It's not tested it yet, but you need to have it on your chart. Ones that are more relevant uh, right now are this one here. We've got one, two, three tests of this high point. So that's, that's di dictated my high point of the zone. Low point there, big rejection pivot at this point here right at the bottom here and then it pushes back up again and then when we look right here we see we've had another attempt at this pulls back through and then pushes down with force and then recently we've had a bit of support in here quite a bit of support in here and it's looking to push through there right now so again it, that's going to help us with our entry strategy uh, then we're going to go a little bit higher because we need to know where our next resistances are if we're going to go along here um, the bottom of this zone is this the A pivot of the back pattern, harmonic back pattern. The upper bound of the zone is this pivot just here. You see it's tested quite a few weeks in there. Uh, then we clustered around here and then very recently uh, when we came down uh, to test this support we came back up again and that bottom of that zone just there is where um, we found resistance and it came back down again. So that's a good resistance zone. And then this D pivot uh, on this crab pattern that completed uh, and then also when we look left uh, we've got a lot of clustering in there as well so that's very very important for the future and then obviously these highs uh, top of the top of the pivot is the highs and then the bottom of the zone uh, we've got these two pivots as well so that forms a, a potential target for the future so again when we're looking at these zones it, we're looking at putting lines of best fit identifying those major pivots and you can see I've done that especially with the help of the auto harmonic uh, pattern software it's not necessarily needed uh, but you can see these are very very strong patterns and when where those pivots are we need to make sure that we're you know we're, we're looking at that support and resistance zone. another one we could look at really I mean it's probably not going to come down this low but you know something we could do just to show you how I look at this look at this a pivot down here this C pivot and we form the zone there you know that's last chance saloon if it if it comes down that far you know we can take that left and we can see where you know in fact was there there was so many points of control there it's unbelievable look at the top of this butterfly pattern this pivot pattern here 
uh, this crab pattern found support in there this is a major support zone I tell you if it breaks this this thing's gonna really suffer so again it's just on your chart uh, you framed your chart so the next thing I want to do is really look at um, this current pullback I'm gonna um, just take this arrow off for now um, this current pullback is very very important uh, I want to I just I've used a just a normal parallel channel just to to identify the highs there and what I want to do is I'll do this on the weekly but then I'm going to go down to the daily and, and, and take that a little bit further uh, so we are touching the top pivot here we're pretty close here we can be a little tighter and move that to around about that point there you see but we're losing the D pivot so it's the line of best fit and I like to make sure that we we're starting on this pivot up here and we've got another touch here we've just had another touch this week as well the bottom trend line we've got one two three four five six big sort of non-linear support there and then the center line is pretty good but let's check that I want to go down to the daily time frame I want to make sure that um, we you we know we're pretty accurate on here so yeah we've got a touch at the top of the pivot here um, you know when we go down to the daily we can just see we need to adjust that slightly to make sure we touch that pivot there uh, you know let's make sure we've got as many touches as we can on this bottom yes it does come out of this channel at this point but the channel wasn't really formed at that point uh, we came down to test this linear support zone that we put in on the weekly see how strong this is here and this is where we want to make sure that uh, we're breaking out of this channel on the daily plus also out of this resistance zone this this entry price at 189.45 is something that we'd be really interested in but we need a signal um, we really do need a signal so what I want to do is just want to go down to the 195 195 is a favorite time frame of mine because the stock market is open for a certain amount of time uh, 195 is actually exactly half of that time uh, so very very good and we can see here on the expert algo we've had a five and a six star buy so with the expert algo we have three four five six star buy six star is the highest probability move uh, because there's 12 points of control that's been met there but what I really like to see is when we get those momentums when we get the five star and then a six star or even a four five six we can see momentum building here and we've got that on the intraday one night when I'm swing trading even if I'm going to take a trade off the uh, weekly time frame I want to understand what's going off on that intraday is there momentum uh, in in the direction of where or against the direction of where we want to trade we can see on the buyers indicator down here that we do have uh, uh, on the intraday we have a positive bias it's green uh, so that's good five six star buy is good um, you know our entry that we've you know this you know discussed briefly at the moment 189.27 on MHK is uh, again it's outside of this big resistance zone it's a, a breaking out of this channel um, and we're backing up with this uh, intraday type of play here so now we're going to go back to the weekly and one of the things we need to understand about this trend is um, we need to identify and label it with an Elliott wave for me and that's really really important so I'm going to switch that on in a minute and then I'm going to um, identify the lows of this current trend which is here so it's pretty obvious at this point there but one of the things we look at for the start of any trend is that we're in the oversold zone and we've got the percentage K uh, crossing over the percentage D in the oversold zone and for me the oversold zone's 20% not 25 it's got to really work for me to cross over in there and that is the start of our trend so I'm going to put the Elliott wave I'm going to switch the Elliott wave indicator suite on and then what I want to do is um, I want to identify this low so basically what you're doing is you're isolating the start of that trend which is this a pivot on the crab pattern there and if you look at here uh, bar number uh, that bar number is one four six one so with the Elliott wave indicator suite I go to the inputs put one four six one because that's where that's the trend we want to measure really and then we just let it do its thing 
And then where we go, we've got a wave one, a wave two, a wave three, and the most important thing is the wave four. And this is, this is you know, I'm building up the picture of, of how I want to uh, look at this uh, potential trade. So Elliott Waves identified that, but the main thing now for us is this wave four behavior. So again, I'm still building the picture here. So I've got a great automated target zone here of around about $250-ish into that automated uh, target zone. I've got these um, resistance zones that I've put on. I've got this big support and resistance zone here where I've got my entry. Uh, and then I've got to look at this wave four behavior. So the first thing when we pull back here, we've got these EMA clouds. The 55, the gray, the 89 is the pink. 55 is above the 89. Fantastic. That's a great start. You see here where the gray was below the pink. That's not good. That's negative territory. That's, you know, you should be in shorts there. But then we've crossed over as we've pulled up on this wave three. We've pulled back some profit taken on this wave four. It's not uh, a simple wave four pullback. It's quite a complex. There's, a, there's an ABC, um, you know, ABCD correction in there somewhere. Uh, don't want to really, not really interested in that. What I'm interested in is this wave four has found support in the 89 EMA cloud there, that last chance support for me. If it goes below there, not really interested. Also in these pullback zones, the green, amber, red, uh, we found support in the amber zone. So that's an 80% probability in the amber zone that we're going to go on and hit that fifth wave target zone. A good probability. The green is 85, the red is 75. So we're, we, you know, we're in the middle of the diddle. Next thing on the wave four pullback. One, what we use is the false breakout stochastic. So we've got these yellow dots in the overbought zone during the wave three. That denotes a really strong bullish trend. So then when we pull back against that trend and we cross over in the oversold zone on the wave four, as long as we don't get yellow dots in the bottom here and it starts to move away, that wave four has behaved normally as far as stochastic is concerned and what it's what it wants to do is return to that overbought zone and start printing more of those yellow dots it's like an elastic band if you like once it pulls back against this really strong uh, bullish anchor if you like it wants to return the next thing we look at is the uh, Elliott wave oscillator and during this wave four we're looking for a night night between 90 and 140 percent of the highest point on the wave three. You can see here the oscillator is green, it pulls back during the wave four, and we've crowned and starting to move back up again between that 90 and 140. So we're, we're looking and measuring that behavior of the wave four. So, so far that profit taking has been normal. We've got that low on the wave four, uh, you know, which is 20th of December. We've had a nice move up. We started this week. But I want to break out of this channel. I want to make sure uh, this, you know, this channel is broken. We're above this um, linear support and resistance zone. So, an aggressive entry would be 189.27, with the stop here. If you're swing trading it, you could be just investing in it, so you wouldn't put a stop here. But if you were swing trading it, stop would be around about 162.30 below the wave four. So that's. Uh, you know, a reasonably sort of aggressive entry. Now, you know, with that, I, I need to do that for me purely because we're one to one to this next resistance zone. Remember, this is not just this resistance, just and this point here. When we look back, there's been some major resistance and pullbacks at this point. So for me, if I've got a one to one to this point and I'm in this trade, I can decide I've got decisions to make then. I've got good decisions to make so I can either decide to take profit, take half the position off, uh, but also move my stop to break even. Give it a chance. If it's going to pull back, it's going to come back and test this and I'm not interested. I'll take half my position off, move the stop to, to, uh, to break even and I'm good. Uh, if I was going for a more conservative entry above this pivot here, I wouldn't have a real decent risk to reward. So for me is get in early, get that impulse move up. If it breaks through there, brilliant. If not, I can make it risk free, take half the position off or just make it risk free and let it run. If it does break through here, uh, we traditionally have that um, resistance zone around that wave three and you know, 80% of the time this um, zone here is telling us 80% is going to break that and hit that fifth wave target zone. So an entry at 189.27 
with a target of 250 is good for me. But by framing the chart and understanding my risk to rewards, I can then start to put a, a trade management strategy in place for this swing trade. If I was swinging it or you know, if it was blend investing, for example, I would look at the behavior here if it does pull back and, and test that original entry again and starts to move away again, I'd probably add to the position. So, you know, th there's, diff there's different decisions to make as this, this behavior starts to go, but you can't really make those decisions unless you understand the behavior of this particular stock on this on this weekly time frame. Well, and also what's happening on the daily, what's happening intraday, does that all back up what you are looking for uh, out of this stock and I'm looking for a long at 189.27. I've done all of my work. I'm happy with my EMA clouds, my Elliott wave pullback. Um, you know, I'm happy with where the start of this trend was. I've got the, you know, I've got the support and resistance zones on there. The wave four behavior. I've built that picture to say, you know, this is, you know, this has really got an 80% probability of going on and hitting that fifth wave target, but there are some um, obstacles in the way and uh, as they come into fruition I start to then make decisions on how to manage that trade so it's all set up I've just just put a stop limit order on for 189.27 to buy x amount of shares uh, and away I go so hopefully that helps this is a this is sort of a, a routine that I go through daily on quite a few stocks so I initially I get that list of stocks to go through that um, that I scan for uh, and then go through sport and resistance zones see where we are uh, on the trend uh, is it an Elliott wave or is it an expert algo type um, strategy you know I half the orders I've got on uh, going into this week are Elliott wave half are expert algo longs so you know and as long as I've got that picture I've done all the work I've got the confidence, I know where that risk to reward is, uh, and I understand the behavior. Uh, I'm either going to say yes or no to that stock. Okay, so that's it for today. Uh, hopefully, this helps a little bit. I'm going to put a few links down in the description to some of the indicators that I've used. This is the TradingView version. Uh, they are available for lots of other platforms as well. Uh, and hopefully, you have a great 2022.